cattle. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt. That's in the time of the 12 patriarchs, still our father Jacob and the time of Joseph. It says, and sojourned there while they were nourished and became there a great multitude so that one could not number their nation. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. Then they cried unto their God and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them, cast them out of their sight and God dried up Red Sea before them. And brought them to Mount Sinai and Cadiz Barnea and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites and they destroyed by their strength all them of Eshbon. And passing over Jordan, they possessed all the hill country. And they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Pharisite, the Jebusite, the Shechemite, and all the Girgashites. And they dwelt in the country many days. And while they sinned not before their God, they prospered, because the God that hated for iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now they are This is in the time of um, the Assyrians It says but now they are turned to their God And are come up from the places Where they were scattered And have possessed Jerusalem where, is their, where their sanctuary is And are uh, seated in the hill country For it was desolate Now therefore my Lord and governor If there be any error in this people And they sin against their God Let us consider that this shall be their ruin And let us go up and we shall overcome them but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them, and we all become a reproach before all the world. All right. So that's basically what the children of Ammon knew about us back in the day, and he um, spread that uh, knowledge about us to the Assyrians or whatever. Now, going back to um, Tacitus, um, dealing with what he had to say about the Christians and the Messiah, Yahweh Shah the Christ. It says the, the Roman historian Tacitus evidence Tacitus's evidence for the historical existence of Christ and early Christians and found it is found in his Annals written about 116 AD book 15 chapter 54. Tacitus refers to Christ, Pontius Pilate, and mass executions on Christians. The passage contains an early non-Christian reference to the origins of Christianity, the execution of uh, the Messiah to Christ describes in, in, in um uh canonical gospels and the presence of the persecution of Christians in first century Rome. Right. Because that's a true account. Alright, this says this 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 is the English translation or whatever. It says the passage which has been subjected to much um scholarly analysis um and much scrutiny and much looking at it or whatever. Um a description of the six day fire that burned Rome that burned much of Rome in July sixty four AD and was sought by, by some Romans to have been set by Emperor Nero himself. It says, consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted um, the most exquisite tortures on the class hated for their abominations called Christians by populace. Cre uh, Cre Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of our procreators, Pontius Pilate, and a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the uh, moment, again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their centra and become popular. All right. Um, so basically, he's saying that Rome was a place to go start up all kind of trends and religions or whatever you wanted to call it and all kind of different superstitions and schools of thought or whatever. Um, and I just want to make note, man, that whole Christos and Christians and Christ or whatever, man. That's just like if you go back through history, man, and you look at the times before the Renaissance and the times before these Greek philosophers came out, man. Take Egypt, Egypt for an example. We know that that that's the land of Matazariah, the land of Mizraim or whatever. It's not even called Egypt in antiquity, man. If you call an Egyptian an Egyptian back in the time of Egypt, they gonna look at you like you crazy. Like what are you, what are you calling me? You know what I'm saying? I'm Mizraim, Matazariah. I come from those people or whatever. But see, they didn't came and changed so many names and stuff. And they, they call us by these names. All right, like I found out some of the things, like when they came over here and conquered that, the, the Native American Indians or whatever, like the Aztecs and the Mayas and the Latinos or whoever, the tribes, the, 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 um, 
people that was in this land before Columbus, like Aztecs and Mayans, those are all bywords also, man. The Aztecs didn't call themselves the Aztecs. The Mayans didn't call themselves the Mayans, man. The Egyptians didn't call themselves the Egyptians. Just like the Christians didn't call themselves the Christians. All right, this is all Roman, Greek, and European, and white American uh, knowledge and philosophy, man. All these names and titles and languages that that's put on us, man. All right? And, um, you know, we're we going to try to start getting better into the Hebrew, man, so we can start getting back to the real vibration and the real speech and plane that we're supposed to be working on, man, as far as our, as far as our speech go, man. Because um, Willie Lynch told you how important language was to, to us and to, and to the making of a slave or whatever, man. But let me finish this out real quick. It says, um... Yeah, it says, um, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their centra and become popular. All right, and that's almost equivalent to New York City today. It says, accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. Then upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted. Not so much of the crime of fire in the city as of hatred against mankind. Mockery of every sort was added to their deaths. Covering with skins of beasts, they were torn by dogs and perished or were nailed to crosses or were doomed to the flames and burnt to serve as a nightly illumination when daylight had expired. All right, that, so that's the type of, um, that's it. That's the type of um, punishment that we was going through. And, and just go, to go back, it also said this, that says, um, Christo, Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procreators, Pontius Pilate, and a most mischievous superstition. All right. Thus check for the moment, again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of evil, but even in Rome. All right. So it says our, our, our leader, whatever, how he shot right there. Who was the, the Christos called by them? All right, suffered the most extreme penalty. Um, you know, um, during the reign of Tiberius, which was that that condemnation to the cross. All right. So with that being said, um, just want to hit you with that quick lesson. Uh, matter of fact, let me hit the scripture real quick on on that word superstition in the scriptures. I think it's about Acts twenty two. Yeah, it's Acts, Acts 25 and 19. All right, where they actually, where they call our religion this, um, you know, superstition or whatever. Let's go there real quick. This is Acts 25, and we're going to start up a little above that so you can get an idea of what it's talking about. Um, that's Acts 25. And um, 13, it says, And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die, before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face, and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. All right, that's going into the Roman court system, which is still prevalent in America today. Because we're supposed to be able to face our accusers today also. The same Roman law. It's verse 17, it says, Therefore, they were come hither without any delay on the morrow. I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. Against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusations of such things as I suppose, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition, of one Jesus, which was dead. Whom Paul affirmed to be alive. So he was saying, man, you know, I thought they was going to accuse him of being a thief or a murderer or something. But they was arguing about, you know, questions within their, within their, within their own little religion or whatever. All right. So he was basically like, man, I, I can't judge because I don't, I don't really know nothing about they, they, their little religion or whatever they had going on. All right. Because I'm going to try to find this list real quick before we get out of here. Um, some people... Um, they actually um, say that Paul, they actually say that Paul started, um, they actually say that Paul started, uh, started up uh, Christianity or whatever. Because he was the one that really um, took it, took it and made the message sort of like worldwide, so to speak. Alright, it's a list on, um.
it's a list um going into uh the timelines of these religions or whatever and it basically a strip uh, uh, gives the um the origins of Christianity to Paul. 